Like so many events in 2020, the annual American Society of Nutrition Conference had to go virtual. I was glued to my screen during the talks by the PREDICT researchers, who are running the world's largest in-depth precision nutrition studies. When I saw that these PREDICT studies were the foundation of a direct-to-consumer nutrition test called ZOE, I just had to try it. In this video, I'll review my experience doing the ZOE test and using my personalized ZOE nutrition plan. Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. The ZOE test is a multi-day at-home procedure that measures your blood glucose, fat response, and microbiome by testing how you respond to specially designed muffins and your own diet. I filled out a bunch of questions about my goals, current eating habits, and a brief medical history. I also opted in to be a participant in their PREDICT3 study, so my test also included a continuous glucose monitor. I was super psyched when my ZOE box arrived on my doorstep. As soon as the kit arrived, I popped my muffins into the freezer and scheduled my test using the Zoe test app. So today is day one of my Zoe test, which means I'll be putting in my blood glucose sensor. Seems like a good spot. And now slowly pull away. Aha! Ta-da! Wow, that actually was not painful at all. It is day two of my Zoe test, which means we are heading into the bathroom uh, to get a poop sample. So I have my gut health test kit in hand. Place the sampling sheet onto the back side of the toilet seat or bowl. Oh, oh no, that was too heavy. Okay, so that was a little bit stressful. Um, I had a very large sample, I guess you could say, and it fell right in. So. Um, I'm gonna try again later today and hopefully I'll have a smaller size sample that doesn't fall right into the toilet. So what I have here are my day three breakfast muffins. I got three muffins. Look how good they look. Here we go, muffin number one. Smells like cake. Not the most delicious muffin I've ever eaten, but I mean, a, little, a little dry, but not terrible. It definitely tastes like cake, definitely. Be a good glucose challenge. Muffin number two. through all the muffins. Hmm. They are dry. So I think that I've had enough morning coffee now to give my poop sample. Now I had tried to do this yesterday and unfortunately my specimen fell into the toilet. Um, now I messaged with the chat with the help support and they were so prompt and so helpful um, because my big question was would urine contaminate the sample? And they told me, yes, it would. So I'm gonna try and give my poop sample again today. Um, I don't know if this is TMI, but I, I tried to get all the urinating done before, and now I'm going to try and get my sample. So here we go. Success. So I had to shake my poop, invert it, make sure it gets all mixed up with the buffer. Now I'm gonna wrap it with some paraffin to make sure none of the poop leaks. That would be bad and smelly. Sorry, USPS, it's poop. Lunch time. Okay, here we go. Mmm, cake for lunch. of the Zoe test, which means muffins for breakfast again. And my husband told me I had to watch this particular show while eating my muffins. Miss Murphy, I'm really hungry. I can't wait for the muffins. Oh, well, why don't you lick the spoon, Patty Pound Kid? Okay, now I just have to pop my blood samples from yesterday into the mail. Then I was tasked with tracking my own meals using the Zoe app. 
Like all food tracking, it's a pain measuring and weighing food. But hey, in the name of science. And that's when the official Zoe test ends. But I opted to do some additional breakfast testing as part of the PREDICT3 study. Zoe sent me a series of breakfasts to test over a few days. A plain white bagel. Cheese. Bagel with nut butter. Plain bagel, then 30 minutes of exercise. Whole apples and applesauce. I would check my blood glucose response two hours after each breakfast, and then fill out a survey interpreting my results. See that huge peak over here? So that is after my breakfast that I had yesterday, which was just a plain white bagel, like all starch. And then if we look at today, see this here? This is within the last two hours. So when I ate my cheese for breakfast, my blood glucose stayed completely flat. I mean, it totally makes sense, but it's just so interesting to actually see it in real time. So I'm just gonna go pop my blood glucose sensor into the mail. Um, this is the last step. I'm finished with the Zoe test now. I have to say I was a little bit sad to take off my blood glucose monitor. Um, I have become kind of obsessed with checking how my blood glucose changes with my different foods and activities. So that has been already really insightful before I've even gotten any of the other test results from the Zoe test back yet. Uh, I have to admit, I'm also kind of relieved that I don't have to track all of my food and physical activity anymore. Um, there's no way around it. That's just really annoying to have to do. Um, but in the name of science, it's totally worth it. Um, I will say that this test is, you know, there's, it's complicated in that there are many steps and there's a lot of really specific timing. Um, so if that's something that sounds like it'd be a challenge for you, you know, you want to think carefully about whether or not to do this test. Um, the Zoe uh, instructions are very clear and they have a really fantastic uh, support chat um, feature, which I used many times and they were always incredibly prompt in responding to me. But that is just something to keep in mind. Um, doing this test is a lot more complicated than just, you know, spitting in a vial or something like that. Here we go. So it looks like there are two attachments that I have received. Um, your insights and your insights part two, gut health. I'm gonna open up this one. You have excellent blood sugar control. Oh, I'm so excited, excellent, 90. And this means your body manages to process most carbohydrate rich foods without suffering dietary inflammation. Blood fat control. We also know that on average, it takes six to eight hours for blood fats to clear after a single meal. Oh, oh no, I got poor. Oh, you have poor blood fat control. This means that your body may suffer dietary inflammation after eating certain fat rich foods. Oh, wow, well I'm, hmm. that makes me a little nervous. I'm a little, I don't know, I always thought I ate a really healthy diet, um, but Wow, I guess I have poor blood fat control. I better do something about this. Introduction to food scores. So they have basically four different levels of scores and that are categorized as once in a while, moderation, enjoy regularly, and enjoy freely. Okay, so I do like that they put in some kind of qualifier of like how much is moderation. Um, sometimes defining moderation can be a little bit challenging. So a lot of factors go into calculating your food scores. So you ready to discover your own scores? I am. I am like sitting on the edge of my seat. Okay, your average meal score was 56. Huh, that kind of feels like underperforming. Oh, okay, so this is more of a typical breakfast that I would eat. We've got a score of 69, huh? So this was my favorite. Alpin, not all natural muesli with no sugar added, huh? So it gave me a pretty low score for the muesli. I always thought that was a really healthy choice. I got a score of 75 for my lunch, so they didn't really like my quinoa. That got, gave me a score of 41. Oh, I got a very low score for the balsamic vinegar. That's interesting. A zero. Holy cow. Yeah, my roasted butternut squash raviolis and Parmesan and olive oil and this Polish sausage gave it a whole thing, a zero? Wow, your overall meal score is lower than individual ingredients. That's because the combination of ingredients exceeds your fat tolerance. Really makes me realize that Polish sausage is not something that should be in my life very often. Oh, and this one got a seven. Oh, ribs. So this got a score of 100. Good news. Your overall meal score is better than the individual ingredients. That's because you've included high fiber foods, which are proven to be beneficial to your gut health. I'm 
feeling pretty shocked um, that it to me it's just showing that in meals where I eat something that has a very high fat component um, so really in meals that have a lot of meat in them a red meat um, so it was like the Polish sausage and the ribs um, and the ground beef that that's really bad for my scoring for the way my body handles those nutrients my gut health report from the poop sample oh Hmm, 77, very high. Well, that makes me happy because I was feeling a little badly about myself that I had such a poor blood lipid uh, metabolism score. So I'm really, hmm, 77. I feel, I feel pretty good about my Zoe microbiome health score. Let's look at what that means a little bit before I gloat too much. In our predict studies, we discovered positive health associations for 15 good bugs. Legend here is that dark green is very high light green is high, yellow is low, orange is, I don't have this bacterium. So when we're looking at the good bugs, <laughs> I love these cute names. They're great. Okay, Oscar, Ocelobacter, species 57 underscore 20, associated with higher insulin sensitivity and lower levels of insulin. And Finn, Firmicutes bacterium, CAG 170, associated with higher insulin sensitivity and decreased cardiovascular risk. Oh, I was only trace for that one. So I don't really have fin. Let's take a look at these bad bacteria. These bacteria are associated with less favorable metabolism, higher blood pressure, and poor glycemic responses. So very low levels of these guys. Chloe, Ruth, Colin, Esther, and Blake, and Eddie. I had high levels of Colton, so that's not so great. Clostridium, species CAG58 associated with higher levels of visceral fat and lower polyunsaturated fat levels. And all of these guys were also trace, which is good because they're the bad bugs. What is the beneficial parasite blastocystis? Although the term parasite doesn't sound very appealing, our results show that it's correlated with less abdominal fat and better metabolism. Let's see, do I have it? Your blastocystis result? Good news! Turns out you are one of the 31% of PREDICT participants who benefit in their gut with this beneficial parasite, Blastocystis. Yes! Score! Woo! Your personalized gut boosters. Woo! Oh good, so it's scoring these based on what I have and what I don't have. So apples are great for me, and it looks like it'll help me boost some good bugs that I don't have, Otis, BU, and Violet, and help continue to nourish ones that I already have in high levels. Valentina, Farhan, Hina, Oscar, Rosie, you, Juan, Uwan, Juan, Veronica. Well, that is fantastic because those are all things that I really like to eat. Okay, my personalized gut suppressors. Foods to avoid as they will likely increase the numbers of bad bacteria in your gut. Beef, sausages. This is interesting because I, just in looking at my own dietary patterns, I, I would say those were things I didn't really eat very often before I met my husband. Um, my husband tends to be a bit more of a meat and potatoes guy. So I feel like I now have some science to show that specific, you know, some very personalized science to show like, look, these things can't be part of my regular diet and they probably shouldn't be part of his regular diet either. Um, so I think this will be, this is definitely going to stimulate some conversations in our house to figure out how can we shift away from these foods without restricting them completely um, because I know that uh, that you know, really that restricting completely tends to make you just want to eat them more. Since there was a bit of a delay in receiving my results, they offered me a free consultation with one of their Zoe nutritionists. Um, is there any further quantities to the once in a while? Like should I, th should I approach once in a while as once a month or once a year or twice a month? Like kind of what's, what's that idea? Once in a while, we're, we're thinking more in, along the realms of, you know, once a month, um, maybe, you know, perhaps a few more times than that. But it's, it, it's, it's learning that that food perhaps isn't having the best impact on your body. So you can kind of plan around it. So if you know that, you know, like you're going to be having that food, it's perhaps building the, the, the rest of the day around that meal. Now it's time to start my four-week Zoe nutrition plan. They recommended an out with the old, in with the new approach. So I'm starting by scanning foods in my pantry and fridge to see their scores. The app also walks you through defining your why. Why do you want to make changes? And research shows that this is a really critical step in behavior change. Week one is called Go for Green. So I'm aiming to eat all foods that score 50 or higher and was also challenged to try three new plants. 
Using the food search function, I mapped out a bunch of meals for the week. The food categories that list foods based on score were helpful too. So in the protein section, nuts, seeds, legumes, and fish scored the highest for me. And the only meat products with a 50 or higher were turkey breast and chicken breast. I also appreciated the suggested alternatives to find healthier swaps. They have recipe ideas categorized by meal, though recipe is probably the wrong word because they listed ingredients but not instructions. So I would consider them meal inspirations. The app is super useful at the grocery store, especially when deciding between different packaged foods like breads and yogurts. One day I had yogurt with chia seeds and blueberries for breakfast, a salad with barley, grapefruit, avocado, and salmon for lunch, and dinner with mushrooms, broccoli, and black beans on quinoa. One adjustment I had to make was to my salad dressings. I usually use olive oil and balsamic vinegar, but the balsamic scored 24 due to a bad blood sugar response. I swapped in red wine vinegar instead, which scores 80 for me. They also recommended creating some go-to snacks, so I would reach for kimchi on a rye crisp or pear fruit with kefir, nuts, or seeds. During week two, I'm learning to master combining foods. So the goal is to aim for a meal score of 75 or higher. You have to enter foods with their serving size into the journal to test their impact on a meal score. And this is the one place where I found the app a little bit clunky. It was a bit finicky when trying to delete a food from a meal, though it's totally possible that this is because I was using an older iPhone. It would also be helpful if the meals listed the individual food scores. Overall, I really appreciated learning how I could incorporate small servings of lower scoring foods into my meal and still get a high meal score. Week three is all about getting day scores of 75 plus and week four is all about incorporating gut boosters. I found it a fun game to see how many gut boosters I could get into a meal, like this salad with spinach, apple, carrot, and sauerkraut, or this farro pilaf with broccoli, bell pepper, zucchini, and black beans. The app did frequently alert me to watch my fats and tell me to avoid eating more fat until a particular time of day. This was the thing I had the most trouble navigating because I didn't have a good sense about how quantity and quality of fat influenced me. The chat function was again really helpful here. Reflecting on the past few months with the Zoe product, there are a lot of things that I like. I appreciate their approach to dietary change by focusing on shifts and emphasizing that no food is off limits, but rather categorizing based on frequency. The program helped me design a repertoire of meals that I know are healthy for my metabolism so that I don't need to be reliant on tracking forever. After getting those mind your fat alerts, I managed to make some tweaks to my daily routine. It also promoted some foods to become mainstays in my diet, like artichokes, avocado, kimchi, and chia seeds. I love the goal to eat five portions of plants per day. I don't mean to brag, but I regularly smashed my plant target. Since I handle fats poorly, it helped me approach these high saturated fat foods with a different attitude. I consume them rarely, in smaller portions, and only the foods that I really enjoy. For example, I love cheese, but since it is a special treat for me, I'll opt to savor a delicious aged cheddar or manchego, but skip the overly cheesy pizza in a seminar. I also loved being a citizen scientist as a participant in the PREDICT3 study. It gave me those science warm fuzzies. There are a few drawbacks. It's expensive, over $350 for the test plus six months of the Insights app. The whole testing and insights process involves lots of food tracking, which is totally necessary, but it takes a lot of time and it can be a pain. So if you decide to get this product, make sure that you're in the mindset to put in that time investment. If you're someone who finds that food tracking can be a slippery slope in your relationship with food, then you'll want to think twice about this. Currently, the apps are only available for Apple. I'm an Android user, so I had to borrow a hand-me-down iPhone to do this test. Thanks, Nora. The Zoe team told me that they're working on it for Android, and depending on when you're watching this video, it may be available now. I come away from this experience feeling like I made a big investment, but that the investment is very worthwhile. Doing the test is pretty involved, but the Zoe team has clear instructions and offers great support throughout. I had no idea that I had a poor postprandial response to lipids, but now that I know I do, I want to do something about it to reduce risk of negative health outcomes down the line. 
After going through the four-week program, I feel educated and empowered to make food choices that are healthier for me, based on the latest science in precision nutrition. This is not a fad diet. It's not overly prescriptive or restrictive. The product provided me with actionable tools that I feel like I can use sustainably for the rest of my life. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out all my references in the video description and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.